Um, so probably to, to the formalities, um, so I'm Lewis Miguel Alexo, I'm the CEO, um, CEO or manager at Weave, whatever you like to, to call me, uh, and co-founder of uh, Brick BC Projects. Um, we take an Australian property here in Brisbane, our first one, Brick Koala. Um, so our, our, our journey is very much um, to keep focus on uh, residential property, technising residential property. Um, got our, got some, Jake is my co-host um, and Klaus, who's our special guest speaker. So what I'll do, I'll get Jake to sort of give us a bit of a, um, a bit of a background of you, Jake, and, um, and just introduce, introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. So my name is Jake Menard. Uh, I am project manager for Dwell Homes Inc. We are a custom home building company uh, out in the Midwest U.S. Uh, in Illinois. Um, I'm also chief finance officer of Renewa Blocks. We are a Bitcoin mining company based in the U in the UK. Uh, we will be having our crowdfund in June, and then hopefully in June. That's what our goal is. Um, so uh, with Dwell Homes, we're looking to uh, basically build rental properties here in Illinois and tokenize them, or possibly tokenize Dwell Homes um, and issue ownership or equity of these rental homes and the, the profits they're bringing in because we're, we're, um, we come from a background that has experienced the crash from 2008 um, where there was basically zero liquidity in uh, the real estate market. So we're trying to help, I guess, lower the barriers of entry for owning real estate and property. Fantastic. And today we have Klaus, as I said, our special guest. And Klaus did come on actually our second ever show, I think it was, right from the beginning. Um, but we're very lucky that we got him in a different time zone today. He's in Miami. And um, Klaus is uh, an important part of our, our family in terms of the, the, the Brick BC family. Um, so Klaus has come from DigiShares. So uh, we're very lucky to have him today To And I will probe him with some things that obviously elaborate some things that is, that's happening with DigiShares and some of the other stuff uh, that's related to DigiShares. So Klaus, just a bit of um, a background of you and, um, and basically just a sort of an overview of DigiShares. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure to uh, to be here again, and uh, I'm I'm looking always uh, at at all the positive marketing work you're doing. Right, I think you're doing great effort both for uh, I think tokenization, but also for the Raven community. Right, you're doing doing a lot. Um, so yeah, so my background is that I have a, I have a PhD in computer science. I used to be a researcher for a few years. Uh, but I left academia quite early. It wasn't uh, wasn't really f- for me. I preferred to be out in the, the real world and do uh, business. So I I started uh, my first company was a spin out from Hewlett Packard. I actually I used to to live in Illinois for a short time as well as in, in Chicago, University of Chicago, where I took my part of my PhD. And uh, when uh, I uh, Finished that, I joined uh, HP, and uh, a few years later, I, the technology I worked on in AI in HP was turned into a, a spin out of HP. And that was, I was focused on AI back then, but uh, later, after several years, I switched over to blockchain. I think blockchain is, is more of a disruptive technology compared to AI, whereas as AI is more of a, a marginal value add to many, many. Uh, kinds of processes and uh, applications so it's you don't see much disruption with ai unfortunately but the blockchain i think we can do a lot more um we can bring new uh, new totally new innovation to the market and create new possibilities for retail investors and for issuers and so on uh, as opposed to what they did before so we founded the uh, ddshares around four years ago and uh, have been uh, developing it it's since then so yeah, I think that's a short intro from my side. Fantastic, thanks for that, Klaus. <clears throat> so yeah, it's um, so this 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 session that we have every week, what is real estate tokenization? It's about educating awareness uh, and provide in terms of latest update what's happening in our industry in terms of um, specifically around real estate tokenization. But obviously, we always sort of have a bit of an education around some in terms of blockchain and um, asset tokenization in general. But um, but obviously, uh, we sort of really hone in in terms of what is real estate tokenization. Um, we always um, <clears throat> like to give a bit of a we got um, obviously our audience makes up of um, people just coming in, <clears throat> people very experienced, so it's just quite a diverse. So. We always start with the basic fundamentals as to what is real, real estate tokenization. And 
people usually hear from me, hear from me or Jake. So today we we couldn't have an, an, any better person to actually explain to us um, what is real estate take, real estate tokenization. So Klaus, from your words, um, give us a, 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 a definition in terms of what is real estate tokenization. Yeah, you put me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I should I should be able to explain that. Do it. Yeah, several times every day. Um, real estate tokenization is 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 basically the 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 concept of representing a real estate asset with tokens on the blockchain, right? So, typically the way it's done is that you you first securitize the asset. So basically, you create an SPV company, a legal unit that owns the property, and then you tokenize the shares of that company. That's the easiest way to do it from a regular perspective, um, and also from a, from a, I would say an investor protection perspective. Um, and and why would you do it, right? So so that's that's uh, that's what we are developing all the time. I would say the understanding of of what kind of benefit it brings and and what is sort of the, the value proposition that it adds to the to the client, the issuer, and the, the investors, um, and and I, I would say that we see we see several benefits and we see several sort of uh, values that we add uh, to our clients and uh, and uh, some of the clients uh, sort of uh, it, it varies a bit what 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 is viewed as as, as the primary benefit of uh, tokenizing your your real estate asset. I would say mo- many uh, come to us to sort of modernize and digitize their business. And uh, yeah, use new technology and uh, become up to date with uh, what's going on in the technology space. Uh, others uh, come to us to automate transactions and processes related to subscriptions into real estate and to trading of real estate assets. And that's really where we can do a lot, I would say. So basically, it, it comes down to reducing the, the back office function and reducing the administrative cost. And also reducing the element of human error in many processes by automating a lot more than what can be done sort of without blockchain technology. Um, so with uh, with tokenization and with blockchain technology, you can you can basically carry out a lot more of the transaction outside the existing financial ecosystem, the existing uh, banks, and so on. You can self custody digital currencies, but also digital securities. In your own wallet, and it means a platform like we are developing can also uh, sort of self custody uh, digital securities and can uh, completely uh, facilitate the entire sort of purchase transaction or subscription process of an investor into a, a real estate property and can also completely facilitate and automate the trading, uh, trading transaction between two. Uh, um, Parties that are not connected and don't know each, each other uh, with, with no counterparty risk. Um, so, so yeah, so now we're getting to the third, the third benefit, which is primarily on the liquidity side, um, where with blockchain technology and tokenization, it, it suddenly becomes possible and actually quite easy to facilitate trading between, uh, between different parties uh, in a peer-to-peer fashion using blockchain technology, uh, atomic swap, so that you can make the trade with no counterparty risk. So, uh, yeah, so real estate tokenization is really the, the concept of uh, issuing or representing real estate assets with tokens on the blockchain. There are different ways to do it. We use primarily security tokens, basically just tokenized shares. Uh, you can also do it with NFTs. That's very popular right now, but... Uh, there are some legal issues, I would say, concerning NFTs and uh, that have to be worked through and uh, and sort of fully uh, understood, I would say, before we would recommend to use NFTs to, re- to represent real estate. Um, but it's an interesting approach, and I'm sure that it can be be uh, be uh, be successful eventually. So yes, yeah, so that's the short the short summary. That's great, Klaus. It's um, again, <clears throat> given that, um, given um, yeah, with, with Klaus and the as being the global leaders in uh, real estate tokenization, those words are gold because um, obviously you, you've been around for a long time in uh, in, 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 sen- in the sense of blockchain, and um, and obviously here that uh, that definitions um, that's this, is, this has been recorded, so only 
anybody can go back and listen to that definition. So thanks for that, Klaus. Really appreciate that. Um, it's funny you mentioned about NFTs. Um, remember, I don't know if you could sort of recall back to around 14 months ago when we when we started discussing in terms of how we're going to do tokenizing our brick, uh, brick BC properties. And um, my part of that conversation was uh, was around NFTs uh, because obviously given the specifics we needed to, 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 to do, given our platform here, we did contemplate about NFTs and uh, obviously after a few meetings over Zoom, we fine tune exactly what it needed to be. And, uh, and I do remember at the time, NFTs wasn't an option at the time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but obviously, <laughs> just how things develop. And, um, and obviously this is this is why, yeah, we, yeah when, when I speak about the new chairs and I speak about new clouds, this is about, this is the, the, the massive um, point of difference you guys have in terms of being very at the pointy end and be able to explore, explore when somebody's looking at tokenizing real estate and um, explore in terms of all the different things that can't, can and can't and, and at, at that kind, it's been, it's been golf for us. So again, I'm not just saying because you're here, the guys know that I'm, we're a big advocate of these issues and, uh, and, and obviously been a very critical partner in terms of what we're doing at Brick Pursuit Project. So um, it, it was great to hear that definition, Klaus. <laughs> Yeah, well, probably just um, the, the sort of put you on a, on, on a bit of a. Uh, well, you are here to be on the spot um, now, so um, sort of moving to the next phase here. So probably in terms of your journey, and I know you sort of briefly covered it, um, where you, we've come from and where you are today. Um, and I guess uh, when you started looking at um, back then and um, setting up these issues, um, uh, what sort of uh, what, what problem were you trying to solve back then? Um, obviously. Blockchain was very early. Obviously, people wanted to take nice real estate, but it, I was from your perspective. What, what problem were, were you actually trying to solve back then? Well, initially, we actually wanted to have a platform for our own use. So we were working on a different project where we wanted to tokenize company equity, and that was five years ago. And we didn't really see any other good providers in the market. Those providers that existed back then had really simple platforms. So we decided we could do something better, actually. Um, we thought we could, at least. Um, and then, sort of after maybe a year or so, we, we made a pivot to, to focus exclusively uh, exclusively on developing technology infrastructure for tokenization, because we thought that it would eventually be a big market. Um, and it was pretty much the same the same value proposition back then. Actually, I think I think it hasn't changed so much over the years. Um, we might have been better to deliver on some areas than others. I would say as, as an industry, I would say the industry is not not too good at delivering on liquidity yet. Um, but it'll come, I think. But but we can certainly deliver on, I would say, digitization, automation, reduction of administrative costs and so on. Um, we can deliver on that today. And already that, I think, is, is a great... Uh, value for, 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 for our clients. But on the liquidity side, it's, it's, uh, it's coming relatively slow. Uh, the exchanges um, in the space are not growing very fast. So we are looking forward to us uh, joining the space. I think some of the big companies like Coinbase and Binance will eventually launch security token trading as well, which will help a lot. Um, and we're also working on exchange um, so, so yeah, so, so hopefully we can deliver better on that part of it in the future. That's fantastic. Um, it's, it's always interesting that, um, you know, sometimes when you're trying to solve a, your own problem, you end up actually provide a problem, uh, you know, solution for everybody else. And I guess that's, that's what you just said. That's where this has all come from. And, um, and, and again, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, um, if you're having a problem, I'm sure a lot of people got the same problem. And, uh, and I guess this is what we were, about. this comes back to in terms of us, if we see with, you know, tokenizing real estate, we basically, we've been doing it, but obviously accessing property is much, such a ma- major issue, not just in Australia, but around the world. Um, and again, basically, you know, we were trying to s- solve a problem to provide access to real estate and uh, by, by solving that problem now provides everybody with the ability to access real estate. So it's always good to hear people's journey as why they started. And um, and um, so it's great to, hear, great to hear your story, um, Klaus, in terms of how it all sort of came about. Um, with the uh, with the blockchains, I know with DigiShares, um, they've got Ethereum, got Ravencoin and Binance. Um, have I missed any there? Is there, is there no, no new additions to that to those three at this stage? Just those three at the moment. 
Uh, today we support uh, more than three, right? So we support Ethereum, Polygon, Binance Smart Chain, Ravencoin, and in principle we also support Stellar. But it's been a long time someone did anything on on that. Um, we're just starting to integrate Polymesh, which actually hasn't been announced yet. So this is the first time we announced it. This is a s- small chain, but it's specialized uh, for security tokens, right? So it's it's the only blockchain that exists that is purely for security tokens. So it's, I think it's it's uh, it's developed by Polymath, and I think it's uh, it has a bright future of, uh, ahead of itself. I would say, especially for more institutional type um, applications. That's right. Yeah, so it's it's good. So at the moment, in terms of the with the the token studios, so the active token studios within DigiShares, we've got Ethereum, we've got Ravencoin. So those ones are coming on as well as additional um, studios within your platform, or they're just going to be sort of external for that. Yeah, no, that'll be yeah, like a token studio for each uh, for yeah. each blockchain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. So with the, just coming back, obviously, uh, we, as, um, as you know, we, we started on the Ethereum and then we're switching that to Ravencoin. Um, with the Ravencoin, uh, has, has the first one been um, launched yet on the, um, from, from your client's perspective on Ravencoin? Or is that about to, to be any day? And I think yeah, some of us know who they are. <laughs> I should have got an update before this uh, call. Yeah, actually, I don't, I don't know. I think it's not launched yet, no. but it's, it's really close. Yeah. But uh, maybe while we are talking here, I can have an update. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, um, they, they have been. I think a lot of people know who they are, and they have been on the show. And I'm assuming it's the same one that um, obviously that uh, we we know. But um, so they have yeah. been on the show, and they've been yeah. on the show as well. So um, yeah, so we haven't heard anything. So I'm assuming it hasn't launched yet. So I uh, also probably wouldn't yeah. have known by now. <laughs> yeah, they probably won't keep it a secret. Yes, yes. Uh, so in terms of, um, from your perspective, well, obviously, you know, we've got 10 properties and the next 10 properties are going to be on Ravencoin. Um, so in terms of other clients that you're dealing with um, that are obviously looking at um, tokenizing or in the process of tokenizing, uh, are you able to share in terms of uh, which ones are actually, I mean, not, not, I don't want in any, we don't want in any names, but obviously just in terms of numbers that are actually looking at minting on the Ravencoin blockchain in the next um, 12 months? Yeah, I think there's a, there's a few, right? I think there's at least at least two or three, maybe even four. Right. And I say again, I'm actually not 100 percent updated, right? Because we have yeah. a sales team, right? And they speak to mm. many clients every day. But I think it's it's in that range. Okay, okay. Because I actually spoke um, to one particular client that's looking coming on as a, as a client for you. I spoke um, to him last week, and that's a commercial project in Europe. Um, right. So they again, um, I think you know, you, you know who I'm talking about. So basically, um, again, they were asking in terms of what chain and so forth. So obviously, Ravencoin. I said we, we, we're committed to Ravencoin and going forward. So uh, that's where we meant it. So if those sort of projects come on board in terms of what they're involved with, um, not only in terms of DigiShares looking after them, but in terms of the Ravencoin chain, be a massive boost for the Ravencoin chain because these are massive projects. Um, these are. These are 180 million dollar projects each, in commercial projects. So, um, so again, it's um, some great things happening in terms of from DigiShares perspective, as well as obviously from a Ravencoin perspective chain. And um, and again, this is obviously where what Ravencoin chain was purposely built for in terms of tokenizing assets on it. So, um, so again, it's uh, it's always great to, to sort of see what's happening from your perspective in terms of different chains. And there are uh, people sort of. Um, I know we had this conversation, Klaus, when we obviously last year when we looked Obviously, Ethereum was the only chain at the time, and it was just too hard for us to switch. Um, uh, and and I, I still remember having this conversation with Adam and, and one of, Adam from your team and a couple of other guys. That um, given how gas fees were obviously so extreme back then, and um, and obviously these guys managed to provide solutions and, and be able to you know, try to sort of minimise those gas fees when minting. Um, uh, but, but I had this conversation I had with Adam because obviously Ethereum, everybody knows Ethereum, everybody trusts Ethereum blockchain. And uh, I, was, uh, I still remember the conversation with Adam. It's, it's got to be Ethereum because obviously everybody knows it'll, it'll compromise our platform in terms of if we don't do on Ethereum. But they sort of said, look, look there's, there is Ravencoin chain and then obviously all this history now where what, uh, what uh, our future is in terms of where we're minting. But um, so I guess in terms of your clients, Klaus, um, 
is that something is there in terms of obviously with the Ethereum obviously being sort of the, the sort of the trust that everybody's you know, the presumed a trusted blockchain um, are you finding sort of that people are sort of very resistant in terms of other chains they just want uh, Ethereum or they open mind about the Raven coin when you have that when you have these discussions with your clients or prospective clients yeah I think Raven kind is I'm oh, sorry for Ethereum is pretty much off the table right now it's too expensive for most for most applications, I would say, if you're going to pay two thousand between two to three thousand in gas fees just to mint tokens for a single project, right? It's going to be prohibitive, I think, to the to the project itself. So it's the only large clients, maybe with a few very large projects, where it doesn't make so much much of a difference, right? That that could be interested in in Ethereum. Otherwise, I have to say that Polygon is, is, is a good second option, and actually many are interested in, in Polygon. But I think Ravencoin is also definitely a, a good option, so I would, I would say that probably the, the best alternatives that we have right now are, are Polygon and, and, and Ravencoin. Binance Smart Chain is not that uh, sought after, I think, due to the lack of, potential lack of decentralization of the chain, right, and, and uh, significant influence over the chain by a few parties but uh, but i would say if you otherwise have some kind of linkage or relationship uh, with the uh, with the binance uh, ecosystem uh, then it makes sense yeah because yeah. i think I, I guess um if you i guess you're always looking for making sure there's always that su- that support from the actual chain itself and you're obviously working with clients and work into minting on the chain and obviously that the people are actually maintaining those chains and i guess in terms you guys have got a good relationship with them um, tron black obviously the the code the lead um, developer for the the, uh, the ravencoin blockchain so when you when you look in terms of that support obviously that would be pretty critical wouldn't it, in terms of how you guys go about um assisting clients and having that access to the people at the very much yeah. the chain yeah and honestly, I think the community support is, is extremely important. So yeah, Ravencoin is, is strong in that area, I would say. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So in terms of um, class, what, what are you seeing? In t- um, uh, I will allow, I will open up for questions after, but I uh, just wanted to sort of get some of these points that uh, allow, sort of allows us to drive the conversation and, and obviously maximise the time we got here with Klaus and um, obviously very much in terms of what's happening at the cold front um, in our industry. Um, in terms of continents, um, Klaus, um, obviously every, every country has got its own um, set of rules in terms of um, the ability to tokenize real estate, um, some more extreme than others. Um, so if you sort of go, let, let's go through some of the continents. So in terms of Europe, right, obviously I mean, Europe's quite large and obviously it's, but, yeah, obviously in Denmark, obviously very different in terms of what's happening in Holland. I mean, the Holland's obviously got their own set of challenges at the moment from what I'm hearing. But probably from your perspective, from a Europe perspective, uh, what are you seeing in terms of governments, um, you know, um, uh, yeah, in terms of how that they view in terms of restricting the, the tokenizing real estate? Um, so from a Europe perspective, just give us an overview on the Europe uh, continent in terms of what's happened there. It's a big question, right? So um, I think generally it's going in the right direction, but it's going quite slow. Each European country has their own regulation. It's not sort of uh, coordinated yet by the European Union. But uh, regulation is is coming that will uh, help at least uh, partly. Um, But maybe not so much in the security token space. Security tokens are mostly viewed as falling under existing security regulation and it's up to each individual regulator to clarify how the digitization of securities um, will influence their yeah, their behavior, sort of their properties within securities regulation. Some regulators have done that, such as in, in Denmark and in Germany and uh, the UK and uh, Switzerland, for instance, at least in Luxembourg. So it's done in some countries, but there are many other countries in, in, in Europe where it hasn't sufficiently been clarified yet and where you have to be in a close dialogue with the regulator and uh, legal companies uh, in order to uh, to uh, to move forward. Um, and then there, we also have countries in Europe where it's almost impossible to, to tokenize uh, shares or equity as, as we uh, normally prefer to do. 
for instance, in Germany, if you cannot do that, you have to to tokenize bonds. In uh, the Netherlands, uh, also, it's a problem to tokenize uh, to tokenize uh, shares directly because there is, uh, I think, a requirement to, to notarize any kind of share transfer. So, so you have to use like a trust and nominee structure, which is expensive and uh, complicated and not good for investor trust. Uh, the same is the case in the UK. Actually, you have due to the stamp duty tax, you have to use a roundabout structure with a kind of trust and nominee structure. Again, very expensive and uh, sort of uh, difficult to understand. Uh, in Switzerland, for instance, uh, you should think that uh, it would be easy to uh, operate. Uh, but in fact, many of our clients that are real estate developers uh, who sort of uh, uh, has the business of uh, raising funding for new development projects and then selling them off and uh, uh, then uh, building new uh, buildings, new properties and so on and keeping going like that, where you could say the, the, the primary aspect of the business is more sort of a kind of investment operation rather than operating uh, properties. Um, that type of companies will fall under regulation in, in Switzerland where they need to be or they become essentially something called a collective investment scheme, a CIS which is very expensive and very complicated to operate under, similar to an investment fund or broker-dealer type license. Um, so in fact, Switzerland is pretty much closed to tokenization unless you are very strict real estate developer of, o operating your uh, properties and so on and not sort of uh, so, so involved in the investment side. So yeah, it's a very uh, fragmented uh, pattern it's difficult to operate in and, and for that reason also it's from from our viewpoint it's easier to operate in the u.s for instance where we have the same regulation in all of the country all of all, all of the states and um, and uh, where it's uh, sort of quite fully supported by the regular long answer no no that's a uh, so it's complicated it's, topic it is. I mean, as you said, Europe is obviously such a large and such a sort of a very, very varied views in terms of where, where things are at. So, um, what about um, Africa? I know you've had a, you've got a, a client in Africa. Um, what, what do you see in Africa as a obviously again okay, such a big continent and uh, the countries different views? Uh, what do you see in there in terms of the um, real estate tokenization? We actually have a number of clients in Africa, uh, especially South Africa is uh, as a. I would say a booming market for tokenization, surprisingly. Um, and I think the on the regular on the regulatory um, from a regular regulatory perspective in Africa, they they simply don't have any regulation yet for to cover this area. So I think that right now there is a kind of situation where people think that they can just proceed and and do it, and then hopefully later on they will be. Uh, forgiven, I think. I think that's that's what we see, and uh, and we have uh, legal partners, uh, especially in South Africa, that sort of have the same philosophy. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of influence from the continent, I would say, and I think that especially from countries like Nigeria and uh, Kenya, Uganda, and so on, I think there is an opportunity for them to skip a whole generation in financial services technology, basically, and go directly to tokenization. They don't, they often don't have a well-developed uh, financial ecosystem or infrastructure in the country. And if they move directly to blockchain, they actually get a lot of it at a fraction of the price. They get banking services, they get bank accounts with wallets, they get access to digital currencies and digital securities and so on outside the financial ecosystem. But that doesn't bother them too much because it doesn't exist. Uh, so they can skip a generation and uh, get a lot of, uh, get access to a lot of kind of, a lot of services, financial services that they didn't have access to before. So it's similar to how they skipped uh, fixed telephony services and went directly to mobile telephony actually. So that's quite interesting, I think. And that's also, I think, uh, a nice property of the industry here that we can, can help, let me say, poor development countries to to uh, to uh, to um, modernize their infrastructure and uh, help the population to get access to to services that we find uh, yeah totally uh, commonplace and normal. So yeah.
there's um there's a huge opportunity in the, in the developing countries that um yeah africa but south america some of the asian countries they're developing and they've obviously some of them never banked before and uh, there's huge opportunities in terms of um, people that never, they dreamed about it they had aspirations but never got to be able to get ahead given given the challenges but now that they actually got a if they've got a mobile phone as most of them do now they actually can really change um it will change people's lives and uh, obviously be able to get into cryptos uh, on be able to make money and be able to then invest in um, yeah, tokenized um real estate so it is a massive game changer when it comes to some of the developing countries and uh and just some of the discussions i've had with people say say in nigeria and uh, and just the um just the the, the excitement in their voice in terms of what's happening and the the they know and actually it's actually real now before they dreamed about it but they never obviously there, there was no chance of actually be able to achieve their dreams unless they they went overseas and be able to you know uh, get the uh, and make those dreams real but they can actually stay in their country now and be able to really get ahead in life and and when i hear when i sort of speak to you know people in, in nigeria and i speak to some in, you know, in south america as well and just to see the yeah, you know, just the excitement in their voice and then again for, and this is obviously why we all why we all are here in terms of um especially around real estate tokenization uh, again it's it is it is life-changing in terms of what we're providing to to some you know people not just in the obviously not just in developed countries but also developing countries and i guess um yeah that's um it's really exciting to you know to, to see what what changes that, that we are making um but uh, but yeah, it's, uh, some countries are very challenging because they got. I know I've spoken to some people in the Middle East, and um, again they've got different sort of challenges over there um, as far as um, um, being able to tokenize real estate. And, and I know you've, you've probably come across with some of those, Klaus. And I think we've sort of some a couple one on your webinars that you have, Digitius has, and uh, some of the ones in Dubai. And, they've got obviously different sort of challenges um, because I think that from their perspective, the, 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 the cost to actually pull the trigger and start doing something is far much greater if the government comes down on them. So some of the more sort of extreme ones that they're just sort of holding, but not, they can't really take the next step. They're just holding until they get clear, clearance from their government, get clarity around it. Um, and that's pretty pretty frustrating, right, Klaus? You probably, like, you've been at the cold front speaking some of those um, ones, say, in Dubai. That a very frustrating environment, right? Yeah, yeah. The Middle East is not not an easy environment either on the regulatory side, I would say. But it's becoming easier, right? So ADGM, the Abu Dhabi based regulator, has basically has the framework now for tokenization of securities. They are just extremely slow to work with, so mm-hmm. it's not it's not easy. Well, the things that things just got to keep, um, you just got to keep working, keep head down, and at the end of the day, yeah. uh, people always find solutions. And I guess having you involved with, some, with the clients, you know, these guys are always about um, you know, providing solutions and always trying to stay that step ahead. And I guess this is why DigiShares um, are the global leaders uh, again for us. That's uh, that's a, that's the role these guys play right from the beginning. So uh, it's uh, it's always about finding solutions because we're very early. It is a matter of finding solutions to 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 to, to hurdles that pop up, and as uh, and again, they'll keep popping up because we're, we're so early. <laughs> now, moving to the next part, um, Klaus, in terms of something that we're very excited about, and I know that you're very excited about it too, is um, obviously the secondary market. So, I, I probably just to give a bit, sort of a context to in terms of the secondary market, what what's happening. So, uh, from a from our perspective, for example, BrickBC projects, um, obviously the platform that DigiShares are created for us, the BrickBC um, property tokens platform, um, and they also maintain our platform. So, in our environment, um, people can buy and sell our, our, our first Brick Koala token series within our environment as, the, as a secondary market in its own right. Next stage is obviously we're looking at a secondary market and I'll sort of probe Klaus on that in terms of what's happening from that space with the Brick Ground Real Estate Exchange. And then obviously T0 is obviously the ultimate um, you know, sort of um, market to be as, as part of our long-term plan. Um, uh, that's part of our pathway in terms of we start talking about secondary markets. So secondary markets obviously provides the, the additional liquidity in terms as we sort of you know, list on to... Um, Brick uh, real estate exchange, but, but but Klaus, in terms of well, give us a bit of a, a, an overview of um, of your sister company that uh, at the moment these guys are working on. But a bit of an overview of what it is the the brick brick um, real estate exchange and um, and sort of a timeline in terms of launching and so forth. 
Uh, it's, uh, it's a long, long and slow process, unfortunately. Um, we are working both with the regulator and the legal, the legal side, and also the technical side, and uh, sort of breaking, breaking ground in both areas, but also uh, doing, doing new stuff, right? New and obviously stuff that hasn't been done before. We want to create an exchange where retail investors can get, get access to trading real estate, and uh, we want to somehow make it possible to take thousands of real estate assets potentially and make them liquid, which is something that no one has done before. Right? Uh, no, no, not, no one has been successful in creating a real estate exchange globally that has sufficient liquidity to actually function quite well, and maybe it has to do with the nature of real estate. I, I don't know, but I hope, I hope not. I hope that we will be able to succeed. Um, so we're using uh, a DeFi, uh, a DeFi technology for for the exchange. We're basically working with uh, Balancer. Balancer is an infrastructure provider for the DeFi space, creating uh, you could say decentralized exchange technology based on the AMM model, which is an automated market maker. Uh, an automated market maker is basically a, a specialized decentralized exchange where you build something called a liquidity pool and the liquidity pool itself is is a counterparty to any trade that occurs on the exchange so the liquidity pool is set up so that it has two different tokens within it and should always in principle be able to trade against any of those two tokens so we will set it up to create we will set up such a liquidity pool for each real estate property that is listed on the the exchange and then we will uh, also we will also put our own token the break token into the liquidity pool and then sort of to facilitate trading between these two two different tokens um, and the idea is that uh, we will create so we've created our to- our own token basically to be able to, to bootstrap the exchange and to provide uh, i would say a, a, a a sufficient level of, of liquidity through the token to begin with uh, until, until the exchange is, uh, is, is launched and is uh, operating in a, in a good fashion. So initially it's launched out of Germany and uh, we, we chose Germany because it's, it, it is a very well developed country on the regulatory side. Uh, also on the technical side, it's, it's I think the most forward looking country in, in Europe. And actually, it was also much less expensive than uh, other competing countries, such as Switzerland. Um, so it's a, it's a good place for us to launch. But of course, it, initially, I think it only makes it possible for people from the European Union to trade on the exchange. And of course, we need to we need to get it working also in the US and in, in, in Asia. But that comes, uh, comes next. Um, so I think the, the current roadmap uh, I think it indicates that we should have an MVP around late summertime um, and the token itself will not be launched until Q4 or something like that. So it's going to take some time, but it's also yeah, quite a complicated project. Also because it's, we are trading security, so we cannot just immediately just directly use DeFi technology. We have to make sure that it's, uh, it's uh, compliant with security regulation and uh, Everyone uh, using the system has to undergo KYC and be whitelisted, and we also have to support transfer restrictions within the liquidity pool and the AMM, which is actually not supported by the standard protocols uh, um, in, the, in the DeFi system. So it has to be extended quite a bit to make sure that it's compliant. Long answer. That is fantastic. Um, so I, as, as we've spoken about, Klaus, um, we're looking forward, obviously, at that time when, um, obviously, that um, we are able to list our tokens on. So whether that's in 12 months' time, obviously, as you said, the Europe be, <clears throat> Europe be the first phase, and um, and then, obviously, Asia will follow suit after that. So we're looking forward to that, then, because um, I think, obviously, it's all, it's all about providing more liquidity, right? So, um, and not to, not to confuse um, people in terms of... Um, so the native token is brick right class for the real estate exchange uh, and that's b-r-i-c-k is the native yeah, token yeah, um, yeah. so got nothing to do with uh, brick bc projects 
That's all right. So, but yeah, but we are looking forward to it. So, um, and yeah. again, as uh, as obviously things develop further, no doubt we'll become more informed in terms of nitty gritties of it all. But um, yeah, they're looking forward to that. Uh, so now, sort of talking about the T zero, obviously the, at the moment it is obviously the the ultimate market for liquidity and going forward. Um, and I know you guys have been been speaking with T zero for 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 a number of months. Um, and, um, and 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 and, and DigiShares had their first client that is look after the list on. Um, on T zero, the uh, the Mirror Park Investors, which is a commercial independent living um, pro, um, project, that was um, that was launched on T zero uh, probably about two months ago, Klaus. But do you want to speak to that um, in terms of that that journey with with the client? Um, yeah, yeah. So so that's another way to create liquidity, right? And to get liquidity, that is to list on T zero. T zero is, I think, still the biggest exchange in the security token space. Uh, even though they are not developing as fast as we uh, were hoping they would, but I think they have, you know, I think in April that have they had around seven million US in trading volume, which is is, is not not a lot, but uh, hopefully they will uh, they will grow. Uh, certainly they are getting competitors, and uh, the entire market I think is growing like a factor ten at least every year. Um, so we have one project that we have listed on C0, and as part of that project, we have integrated quite closely with C0 and uh, can sort of uh, uh, list tokens and transfer tokens over from, from our side to be traded on C0 and still receive information back from C0 to, to display the, uh, the uh, share cap table on, uh, within, uh, within our system. Um, so we have so the, the project we have listed is uh, is, uh, is, a, is a property called uh, the Spot at Mara Park, um, owned and operated by a company called Marketplace Capital, which is a Texas-based real estate owner operator with around four hundred billion uh, US in assets, and um, and uh, it, it's it's gone uh, quite well. I would say uh, it's an interesting. Uh, development to get in place and I think uh, T0 is, uh, is a great company with a, with a good team and it's been a pleasure to, to work with them and uh, I think we, we are in discussions about uh, several other projects that could potentially be listed uh, with, with them. Um, we do see them as a leader in the space and, um, and uh, I think it's a nice way for, for, for larger, larger projects to get liquidity. And, um, what, are, what did I want to say? Um, the, the problem with the market space capital uh, project here is actually it's not very liquid, I would say. And it's, it's primarily because the existing owners, the existing shareholders don't want to sell. So that's, that's uh, of course, an issue, right? And that could also, that could always be an issue with real estate if, if, if uh, people are not sort of um, short-term investing into it, but it's primarily long-term investors into real estate and not really sort of trading on a daily basis. Then, of course, we will not see a lot of liquidity, but I also think that that will change over the years as, as we move forward and we fractionalize and we make it accessible for, for retail investors. Is it okay to, to come here with some questions or am I interrupting? No, no, we're just, we're just trying to get to some content and I'll open up for questions um, shortly. Okay. So just, thank if, uh, but, but thank you for, for coming on and, uh, and I'll also saying hello to people actually here of, of, have been, have joined us, um, Xander, um, Philly, Sunny, Rita Lisa, um, Steve, Indibo, LSJ, Mate, AB, Jenny. So thank you for, for coming on and, and listening to our show. At, um, and we got Klaus, as uh, we've been talking um, uh, from DigiShares um, and um, providing his wisdom and his experience, what's happening in our industry. Um, so just a few, couple of things to get through because, uh, again, while we've got Klaus here, it's important to some of these um, these um, areas that we cover to making sure we get uh, the most um, gold nuggets out of him as we can. <laughs> But um, just talking about T zero as uh, Klaus is covering. Um, uh, so at the moment, I think there's what one, two, three, four, five, six um, projects at the moment on T zero. So um, so obviously very, still very early stages, but obviously the the pathway and obviously with the the owners of the New York Stock Exchange uh, um, being the owners of that as well as um, T zero having a share having a stake in T zero just obviously sets the tone in going forward in terms of uh, as a, as an industry where we're going from a tokenization perspective um but uh, but Klaus, so just sort of moving to the next session um next area uh, probably just to sort of um 
um, before we sort of open up for open up for questions. Um, from uh, from your perspective, from DigiShare's perspective, in terms of your journey, can you sort of give us a bit of a an insight in terms of um, what's the the vision and what's the pathway for DigiShare's in the next phase? Yeah, I think I think we are we are on the on on the path, and it's not uh, we're not going to do anything. Uh, totally different from what we're doing now. I think we will do the same, just uh, more of it and, uh, and better. So we will just keep expanding the, the platform and uh, keep expanding our marketing and sales operations around it, keep expanding our partnership network similar to 30 and custodians and uh, KYC providers and so forth. Uh, and we will develop our own exchange, not as an option just for our wide level partners, but for anyone to be able to list the assets and, uh, and for investors, for retail investors especially, to get access to liquidity. So, so I think that's that's we can stay on that path for for years uh, to come. Um, we are tracking regulations all the time and uh, expanding our network of legal partners also all the time to make sure that we can operate in more countries. Um, we are developing a department in the U.S. I'm in Miami um, this week to. Yeah, to to see uh, about uh, growing the organization here and uh, signing up with some investors potentially. Um, the U.S. is the easiest market for us to operate in, so we will definitely uh, focus on, on on the U.S. Uh, uh, for the next year or two. I would say, not not forgetting the rest of the world, of course, but but uh, putting a lot of effort uh, in the U.S. I would say. So. Um, so I think that's that's it, and uh, and uh, yeah, that will give us a bit, I think, for years to come. Because you got Gabriel. Gabriel's based in Miami? Gabriel is based in Miami, yeah. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Well, what we might do, we might open up the floor for, for questions. Um, Raven, uh, please, um, please ask away. Thank you, thank you. I have tons of questions, and I'm happy to see Abe and Jenny here as well. Uh, uh, first of all, I would... Like, thank you for this um, session. It's very uh, informative. We learned a lot. And I would like to, to know if uh, judiciaries have, uh, how would say, challenged the legal system in any way when it, when it comes to regulations and stuff. Like, yeah, if you I need think, a newspaper. Think, uh, go ahead. No, but because when you talk about. Uh, in general, when people talk about security, security tokens, all the regulations, exchanges, stock markets, and so on, it feels like because the world is divided in, uh, how do you say it in English, uh, three uh, sectors, right? You have the public sector, the state, the government. You have the private sector, the corporations and the companies, and the, you have the voluntary sector or civic sector, whatever you call it, civil samhälle in Swedish, I don't know what it's called in Danish, but uh, uh, people on the ground, like the people, right? So you have three sectors. And yeah. the rules are actually made for like the people. Yeah. So we can go out in a bar, we can drink a beer with some guy, and we look him in the eye, we shake his hand, and we say, we will give you 15% in our startup if you make the web design for us. And that's legally binding. If he has a weakness for that, it's legally binding. Like, have a beer, <laughs> shake his hand, and say something, right? Yeah. So we have one side of the legal system, which is uh, very non-digital, so to say. And I don't know how it is in Denmark, but in Sweden, if you have a company, a little company, you're not in any way on the, exter uh, on the exchange at all. You are not... Um, and what you have is like a book where you keep like a list of stock owners. Yeah. So you have it like your stock book, which says that, okay, Martin has 300 stocks, uh, Lisa has 500 stock, uh, shares in the company and so on. And you still have, in the small terms, you still have what's called, I think it's called um, stock certificate in English. English. Can it be that? Yeah. Like you have a note that say. So, so in the very small, like you and I, if we have a hamburger restaurant, we, we will probably have a list somewhere which uh, describes the ownership, right? Yeah. 
So my point right. is like, if you make that one digital, isn't that the same thing? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we are we we manage the checkup table within the system, and uh, it's not on chain, but it's it's managed within the system. It is sort of kept up to date from the blockchain. Um, I'm not completely sure what, what if, if that responds to your your question, but you also asked if we challenge the 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 regulatory system, right? And I think that, that we actually don't do that so much. Um, so we we see ourselves more as uh, as a company that is uh, not really a crypto company, but more a blockchain infrastructure company, and um, and sort of. Uh, trying to stay i would say we're working with securities right so by nature we are we are within securities regulation and we we have to be regulated all our all activities of ours are regulated right so we are not like crypto companies that are unregulated and i would say any any of you guys that want to work with organization you will be you will be regulated and you cannot uh, escape regulations in, in in any way but of course, the entire crypto space, DeFi space, and so on will be fully regulated within a year or two, right? So it's just a matter of time for everyone to be regulated. We're just a bit ahead of the rest of, of, of the industry, I think, and uh, prepared for regulation when it would come. But if I can, if I can add to that, Klaus, um, so probably from Raven, uh, from, from a, that question around the legal, as to whether these shares gets involved legal or not, um, and then Klaus has answered that. But if I can just have to, in terms of our journey, so, um, uh, and I think something people are be also very conscious. It, it's um, I've had this couple of people sort of mean, oh, we're going to tokenize real estate in, in Australia, and to- tokenize real estate all over the world. Something got to be very careful. Every country's got its own set of rules when it comes yeah. to legislation, you know, whether it's tax, um, whether it's the SEC rules, whether it's the foreign ownership rules. So you just got to be really very careful that um, where you're tokenizing, you're make, making sure that you're meeting a country's rules because you might meet the blockchain rules, but you've got this other bigger set of rules for each country that really sort of um, governs in terms of what you can and can't do in that respective country. So if I could, if I could use Bass as an example, and um, when I went to, to Klaus, basically I said to him, look, this is our model. This is the model here in Australia that ticks all the boxes um, as, as far as, you know, um, in terms of tax, in terms of foreign ownership rules. Um, our, our equivalent of the SEC is the ASIC here in Australia. So, again, you've got all these um, set of... Um, legislations that touch real estate property is making sure that uh, you meet those first and then basically we went to Klaus and said this is um, it ticks the box as far as we're concerned here in Australia this is our model and basically you tell us now from a blockchain rules as to you know how that fits in with the blockchain rules and obviously we had various conversations around that we back, went backwards and forwards and Klaus checked with his own legal team um, from a blockchain perspective how that sort of fitted in and, and, and basically we came up with a solution to, to, to get started so again um, I think it's up to each one to find out in terms of their respective country what legislation they've got to meet and then and then come to Klaus and say this is the model <laughs> right Klaus that would be right to say in terms of our journey with you in, in terms of the typical approach yeah, I, I, I think so, right? We have a legal counsel in Germany, which is, I think, uh, he's called Volodymyr. I think he's, he's one of the top guys globally, actually. I think he's in the space. He's got a really good overview of uh, of regulation in many, many countries, and he can sort of guide on a high level and uh, help you to find the, the optional regulation to work from, uh, and also within how to operate within the regulation. But, but of course, you also need to always work, have a local legal partner in order to be sure that you stay compliant it's just it's just really necessary i would say and not just from a tokenization perspective also from a, just a capital raising perspective right there's a lot of regulation that you have to follow so it's, it's wonderful uh, thank you very much thank you very much for responses and and my i think that the point i was trying to make is that of course you should follow the regulations but it's very difficult to know which regulations to follow like KYC stands for know your customer. It's not like it doesn't mean know your citizen. And it's only applied if you have a third party that is doing business for other people. Like if you have a security as a custodian, uh, if you have a security in custody for customers, where you are transferring ownership between a customer to a customer. But if it's a direct uh, between point to point or peer to peer, there is never a third party and 
there there cannot exist anything such as know your customer because there is no customer. This, this like me and A, we work full time uh, at the bank. We work in finance. Um, that's our day job, and it's very fun to see how uh, the new digital era uh, collides with the traditional finance system. It's it's very interesting. And so far, it's interesting to see like if digital in the future. Let's say that you have eleven million people in different countries in South America that would like to invest just eight dollars or eleven dollars in uh, real estate in Manhattan. So maybe this will be what digital will do in three or four or five years. That you have what like. 10 million people investing in 11 dollar each it's not much but it makes a lot of money so do you see that as a will that be would you see that like realistic that you will have a large sum of people that will invest small sums which will become a huge amount of money I, into real estate I think, projects yeah. I think it's necessary that we uh, get to that point. Why? Otherwise, I think the industry will have failed, basically, because it's the it's a basic assumption for everything that we do that we can reach that point. Right? If we if we don't manage to educate and encourage and motivate the retail investors to get into real estate investment, then I think and then I think we've been a failure. Actually, frank, frankly, I would say the institutional investors, the uh, so, yeah, the large, the high net worth individuals and so on, they already invest into real estate and they, they know that it's important to diversify your investment into real estate and it's, it's a critical element of any any portfolio, right? But retail investors don't know that and uh, traditionally, of course, it's been impossible for them to participate, but, but now with, with fractionalization and tokenization, it becomes possible for them to do it. So I think it's just a matter of time and enough enough education and uh, enough uh, visibility and uh, credibility for the industry before we will uh, engage them, I think, um, in, in what we're doing here. And if we can't do it, then I think it's, uh, it's, it's a total failure. So it has to happen. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And, and because we're so early, obviously, even, even people who are actually in cryptos, are heavily trading cryptos, there's still actually lack of awareness that you can actually buy real estate in another country through the tokenization method. So again, it's a uh, great class. It's, um, it's, and again, this is obviously from our perspective where we keep um, doing sessions to educate, uh, the, especially the retail market. This is obviously what we're focusing on, the retail market that anybody can buy real estate from, you yeah, know, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. And, um, and this is why you know, we keep um, doing these sessions. Uh, we obviously put the Q&A sessions that we do every week and, uh, and try to sort of, uh, again, it's, uh, we all, have to play our part um, in, in, in providing education in terms of um, yeah, the access yeah. to real estate. Um, you do a good job too, I have to say. Oh, yes. so we, have to work, we have to work together on that. I think it's a primary uh, task of the industry to work together on that and to, to really engage the real estate investors, but also I think to make it really easy for them to uh, invest and to make it transparent and to make it trustworthy for them to invest and to avoid any uh, scammy projects, for instance, in our space. We haven't seen that to, to, to date. So I think that's that's a nice property also of, of the industry that we are in, um, which uh, distinguishes it from the, the rest of the crypto space, I would say. But we have to keep avoiding it. I agree, I agree. And talk about education, Klaus. Um, as we move, as, as obviously, yeah, you being Miami is actually a big part of that um, in terms of education. I know you're doing a few sessions with the SDO markets. So we've had SDO, we've had, we've actually had Kyle on this show from SDO markets. The guys are big supporters of the Raven Coin. They do their, their YouTube channel, as we all know, and they they got the ladies focus on NFTs and then basic education. We've got uh, Louise and Jason, who was all for, who have also been on our show, where they're trying to educate the the the, the Latino community in terms of all things blockchain and um so uh, again probably just give us an update um klaus in terms of the sessions that you that you're rolling out over the next um few days uh i think you're there for a week uh in in miami a week or two weeks yeah one week uh so we're doing a master class tomorrow on the at the red roof i think that should be a very um famous place i think in miami and i think there'll be around 100 people there all real estate people so it should be it's quite well attended uh, it's, it's, actually, it's actually a collaboration, collaboration with the security token guys. Um, they will be there speaking as well. 
we will have one client speaking as well, and we will be doing sort of a general update on the industry and uh, sort of uh, the state of the art, I would say, of the tokenization space. Um, we'll be doing the same also in Vienna at the end of May, uh, and then again in Las Vegas, I think in September, and in San Jose, in, in Silicon Valley, basically, in October. And um, yeah, we might, I think we'll probably add one or two more throughout the year. And then, of course, we have a lot of webinars and uh, yeah, online, uh, online uh, uh, events that we also participate in almost every week. Um, we do a monthly uh, webinar also. It's next week we have uh, a session about uh, tokenization with NFTs. Um, so even though it's not something that we do, I think it's something that we will do in the future. Uh, we just have to find the right use case and have to make sure that it's compliant. Um, then we take a break with the webinars, but I think we'll start again in August or something like that. And uh, yeah, we, we cover different topics such as regulations or sustainability, I think will be a topic uh, after in the fall as well. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of interesting, interesting topics. And, and, and again, uh, all of it with the, with the goal really of uh, educating and uh, motivating and and learning, I think, uh, learning for all of us. That's right. Um, actually, just on your next webinar, our, actually, Jake had to actually get away. He's got a bad connection. So, yes, he's actually um, fallen out as my co-host. Uh, but Jake is actually on as one of the speakers at yep. the next webinar. So, um, so it'd be great in terms of his project that he's involved with and and obviously his journey in terms of what they're doing. So, it'd be, be yep. good to see hear Jake speak. Um, obviously, you've been kind enough to have us a couple of times on, on your webinars and we've, we've yeah. enjoyed yeah. it. And so, that's been yeah. great. <laughs> Yeah. But um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the masterclass uh, tomorrow is uh, is face to face, and um, I was hoping Klaus would stick in the phone and sort of do some FaceTime and show me the session. Yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> it's exclusive; it's an exclusive one, so you're gonna have to show up. So if you're in Miami, it'll be a great session to attend. And the yeah. guys at SDO Markets they do a fantastic job in in really education and educating the the you know, the, the white community, bringing mainstream to to what we're doing. In terms of asset tokenization, so um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. that, no doubt you'll give me an update in terms of how it all went um, in the next couple next week or so. <laughs> but look, in terms of um, just uh, as we sort of wrap up, we try to sort of keep to the hour. Um, again, if, if there's any questions, please come up. We're just trying to sort of wrap up now. I have um, one little small question. I have yeah, one yeah. small question, if it's okay. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I, I, I totally love this with digitalization and legal stuff. Okay, let's give this an example. Me, Jed, and Abe, we are from Sweden, Swedish residents. Let's say we go to Copenhagen. We go to Copenhagen, we sit in a bar, and we buy tokens from DigiShares. Would that be Danish law or Swedish law? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Or if two Chinese yeah. guys go to Las Vegas, they go to Las Vegas and they look at you guys, they, they see you in this, as you said, you go to Las Vegas. Two Chinese investors, they sit down and have dinner. And one guy says to another guy, you can buy some of my tokens. So they sit in Las Vegas, they do it digitally, but they're both from China. Is it Chinese law or American law? And I think that's, this is a, this is a huge topic, actually. It is, and uh, the legal guys charge a lot of money to help you find the answer. <laughs> uh, I have to say, I don't, I don't necessarily have the answer. I would say for for the first uh, case uh, where you have a Swedish uh, issuer and a Danish investor, uh, I think the primary focus would be on the Swedish law um, for the issuance and for the yeah exemptions and so on, prospectus and all that stuff. And I think as long as it's within the European Union, you can you can uh, you can transport or passport the prospectus, uh, the securities around within the European Union, and it's pretty sort of uh, synchronized, right? Um, so I think that's that's not so tough. But uh, with, the, with the two Chinese guys in, in the US, I think it's 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 uh, it's maybe harder. But I I don't I don't know. But it's harder. But I think what the European Union is working on also now, sort of to try to. To make that easier for for issuers and investors to 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 live in, I guess is the right way to say it. To exist in. 
yeah, if I can add to that, Klaus, uh, I guess from our perspective here in Australia, so Raven, you're more than welcome to buy our brick koala property tokens or our Brisbane property here, so anybody can buy. So how does that apply to you? You're based in Sweden. So basically, <clears throat> the only thing you got to worry about is that when you buy it and then you sell it, the only thing you've got to worry about is basically the capital gain you'll make on it and report that in Sweden. So we don't obviously we don't report back to your tax authorities in Sweden. It's up to you to report that when you make your capital gain. So obviously the tokens will be um, sellable on the secondary market. So when you buy, if you buy for $80, you sell for $100, 100, uh, $180, you make a $100 capital gain, then you've got to report that capital gain in Sweden, again, not knowing what the, what the taxes are there, whether, you know, whether it's accessible. I know New Zealand, for example, in New Zealand, there's actually no capital gain state. So basically, when somebody makes a capital gain in New Zealand, uh, when they report the hundred dollars, it's actually not accessible for for tax. So again, it comes back to your your own jurisdiction in your country as to as a token holder as to what tax you're assessed on. Um, from our perspective, we basically issue the tokens here, um, for, obviously on, on the blockchain, and or say for example, the big koala. And obviously, we've met the laws as far as here. We've met the laws in terms, of obviously, the blockchain. That was we listed on the DigiShares. Obviously, maintain our platform. So, from our perspective, we ticked all the boxes, and they're just a matter for the token holder where they actually are reporting their tax to be where they actually live as a resident for the tax purposes in their respective country. So, so I hope that sort of gives you a bit of an insight in terms of from our perspective. Um, which I think would be very similar uh, in other countries um, in terms of where the holder reports their tax. Uh, we've got uh, Abe. Abe has also joined uh, as a speaker. Did you want to ask a question, Abe? Well, well I, I was uh, going to like also uh, to say almost the same thing that uh, you said, uh, Brick PC. Uh, as an answer to rebel rebels, that that uh, if um, and normally it, it will be the law of the jurisdiction in where where the contract was uh, made, but but uh, I think that we in um, at the end of the day we we need special crypto laws for the, the countries. Like as an example, we would need a crypto law for Sweden because. The problem is that actually it's not really possible to to make tokenizations in, in uh, like uh, if you own a company, uh, I cannot own a, sh a share in a company uh, with a token. It's not really possible. So it would be very good if the politicians like made new laws to facilitate the crypto sphere. I guess, I guess you're always guided by in terms of whoever's issuing the token, like say for example, if you see in terms of us issuing our tokens, we, we, we know what our what what we we've, we've got. And obviously when we put the tokens out there, we know it's compliant with all things, um, both from uh, our jurisdictions here as well as the blockchain jurisdiction. And um, and I guess that's very clear in terms of when people buy a brick wallet token, it's very clear when they buy it, it's um, yeah, it's, a, it's a token that represents a, you know, a fraction of a real estate property. Um, but um, Klaus, did you want to add, add anything to that? Uh, no, I, actually, I have to drop off. I have a meeting yeah. in a few minutes, but it's been a pleasure to uh, be here yeah. once again. And yeah, thank uh, you, to join another time. Yeah, thank you so much. And we'll wrap it up now. It's um, just kind of, you know, and, um, but yeah, look, I really appreciate, Klaus, uh, for giving up your yeah. time to share right, your knowledge with us. And, um, and, that, uh, and maybe in a few months' time, we'll give us another update in terms of what's happening yeah. in, uh, at the coal front. So really appreciate it, Klaus. Yeah, yeah but have a likewise. great time in Miami. Yeah. Have a safe trip in Miami. And take, stay safe. Thank you. Bye bye. That's the advice. But um, yeah, look, it's, um, if, if there's um, if there's any other questions there, um, happy to take the questions. Um, and I think um, when uh, obviously we we're, 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 Klaus and I are very much on the same page. Uh, obviously dealing with some various clients from around the world, and I sort of um, I can sort of give in terms of views in uh, in terms of what's happening real estate tokenization. If anybody's got any questions. Um, but yeah, look, it's, um, as I said, try to wrap it up and try to stick it to the hour. We're just a bit over the hour now. But um, really appreciate um, your time to come in and, and, and listening and hearing Klaus. And uh, I think it was, we were quite fortunate to have somebody of his calibre um, in terms of his knowledge and experience in, um, in real estate tokenization. So, um, yeah, if there, if there, is there any, any other questions there um, that people want to ask, want to come up and add as a speaker?
Um, Mary just joined us. Hello, Mary. Hope you're well. There's been a few other ones. Jenny's just joined us before. G Mobby, hope you're well. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, look, at, uh, if, if there's no other questions, we'll, we'll wrap it up. And um, just, a, just a reminder that I've put some, t- um, I've put some pin tweet, um, pin some tweets up uh, up the top. So we've got DigiShares, as, as the class was saying, we've got the, the, the master class in, in Miami tomorrow. Um, just also the real estate, um, I've also pinned there the, the brick um, real estate exchange, a secondary exchange that Klaus was talking about. So I've pinned that up there. Um, and also our own there um, in terms of our brick VC projects. Um, but yeah, look, it's, um, again, this is about uh, each week, same time, same place, keep informing in terms of what is real estate tokenization. And hopefully, um, Mary, maybe you can invite some of the traditional real estate um, investors to come in um, and, and share in terms of what is happening in terms of um, tokenizing of real estate. Um, uh, I know Mary, she has, uh, we have actually had Mary on before, as some of you know, uh, a few weeks ago as our special speaker, um, guest speaker, and um, it was great to get her insights. And um, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's always good to get a variety of different people come on. And obviously, we're talking about real estate, we're talking about um, real estate on the blockchain so um yeah so look at uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up and um uh, thank you for joining everyone and um stay safe take care and um see you same time same place next week bye-bye for now bye